We're going to start with the story that we're going to continue with tomorrow mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. Omid Scobie, who's uh, written this new book about the Royals, is in the studio tomorrow. Yes. We're going to ask him a lot of questions about it, and we have a lot of questions to ask. Just tell um, you, I'm on page 213. I've got a copy. <gasps> well done. Oh, I'm not going to tell you What's where I've hidden it. Well, you're the lady well, you I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely... I've got to say, it's riveting. I'm not bored. I'm on page 213, and I'm absolutely gripped. But here's a man with a thesis, and his thesis, basically, is that the monarchy have had it. They're all washed up. You know, most people aren't into them. You know, they're, they're, they're a relic of a bygone era, that kind of a thing. And so it seems to me that every single thing he writes is seen from that point of view. That's his idea, that's what he thinks, and that's how he's presenting it. That's yeah, what, I, that's what I, my, my take on mm -hmm. it. Do, do you... So he's looking at it independently, you feel, but with that viewpoint, are, a lot of people feel he's representing Harry and Meghan. In these in these books, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a question, isn't there? It's definitely not sort of officially sanctioned by them, and I think there are some people who would say, well, he's not actually as close to them as he would like to make out. It's certainly he's in their camp. I think it's fair to say. I mean, there's no question about whose side he's on in this in this sort of uh, dispute. But I mean, he's been at pains to say, I'm not their friend. Mm. I'm not their mouthpiece. Don't accuse me of being that. But certainly, you know, at, just as everybody else has sympathies, mm -hmm. usually on one side or another, it's quite clear well, that his rest with Meghan and Harry. What's interesting is every day in this news item mm. this week, we've actually spoke about the book before yeah, no, exactly. he's on the show tomorrow. He's but great at PR. Definitely, <laughs> definitely getting the PR they, I suppose, mm -hmm. intended. Um, the story in question today, though, is that the Dutch edition of the book um, has been withdrawn. Uh, the translated version in the Netherlands appears uh, to name the royal who allegedly expressed concerns about the colour of Prince Archie's skin. Um, now, we all remember that interview, don't we, that, yes. uh, when Meghan stated that a senior member of the royal family questioned the colour of their baby's skin. I think we've got a little clip of it now. Yeah. And also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? That conversation, <laughs> I'm never going to share. Um, but at the time, at the time it was awkward, I was a bit shocked. The key word here is concern. Megan mm -hmm. is saying concern over the colour of the baby's mm. skin. So in the Dutch ed edition, there's a name in it. And I, I don't understand why there'd be a name in a, in a Dutch edition. That's not a translation right. issue. Um, it is out there. People have seen it. Yes. Um, this is a major, major story developing, don't you think? It is, it is. And you're right to sort of ask. So if it was a tra direct translation, the name isn't in the English language version. So where did it come from? Mm -hmm. Omid Scobie says he didn't write it in there. Um, was it an earlier version of the book that was translated? There were all these theories about it. But one thing I will say is, my goodness, this has been effective at getting this book on the front mm. pages of the newspapers, hasn't it? And I think there is such... There's this very famous saying, which is there's no such thing as bad news if you're trying to sell something. Well, I know. I mean, it's, obviously, people are fascinated. And, of course, once people in Holland saw the name, which they did, then that name starts circulating oh, everywhere on social media. And these days, you can't stop people having a look and seeing yeah. it. Therefore, you can't stop it really becoming mm -hmm. uh, common knowledge. So, you know, the, the, the repercussions could be immense, actually. Yeah, and I we think... can't repeat the name, we should no, say, no, for legal no, reasons. No, of course so we can't. But, but what we that. should say is I don't think there's any, like you say, bad press when you're trying to sell something. However, if you're the royal family, I think there's a the bad press is maybe not mm. what they need. Well, absolutely. Anyone who watches The Crown sees how anxious... I know it's not a documentary, I'm aware that it's fictional, but I think this part of it is accurate, that obviously the royal family sinks or swims on the back of public opinion. You know, if we are largely in favour of a monarchy and we like them and we're pleased with them, then it all goes well. And if we're not, then they seek to, you know, reinstate themselves mm. in our affections. Mm. They need to be popular. They want us to like them. I mean, for some of us, I mean, I've always adored them. I always find them absolutely yeah, beguiling and, and fascinating, really. But I think, obviously, it's clear some people don't. Mm -hmm. We have to keep going back to what Megan said. And the allegation is, the insinuation was, whoever said it, was a concern. Concerned. I mm -hmm. think that's the word that what, sticks in my mind. It wasn't a gentle yeah. question, yeah. like, oh, mm -hmm. I wonder, will they be tall or dark hair or blonde yeah. A concern. Yeah.
Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think people were quite shocked when they when they heard that revelation in the interview. And, you know, it's it's quite grim, really. Um, but uh, yes, uh, you, you know, it's now an allegation that's out there about the royal family. Obviously, that is kind of something quite serious and substantive. And, you know, it relates to some other allegations that there have been about Meghan's treatment, for example. Um, but I do have to say, I mean, I, I don't think this book does anybody any favours on either side of this sort of familial dispute because I sort of think we've heard enough about it now and they, they're clearly just a family at internal war which happens to families all the time it's just really unfortunate when you have to live it out in the public domain and I think certain members of the royal family haven't always helped themselves but it's it's not great for this book to be out there that isn't officially sanctioned mm. uh, by anyone but then they are the royal family and it's there also, was, it's also true to say isn't it that in Harry's book spare he didn't talk about this incident did he no, no. no and, and you know when other people called the royal family racist neither Harry nor Meghan did actually call the royal family family racist mm -hmm. than they could have done and, and Harry could have made a huge issue of it in his book and he didn't, didn't allude to it at all. So it makes you wonder, doesn't it, kind of quite how significant it was? Was yeah. it really meant nastily? Mm. Was it something somebody said thoughtlessly? I don't, I don't mean it's okay to say it, I don't think it is, but maybe not with malicious intent, you know, that kind of a thing. I, I do, I mean, I, as I say, I'm halfway through the book, I've read, read every single word, but I haven't skimmed it. And, and, and every incident in it, I think, can be seen from either view. So, for example, okay. you know, Charles and the pen, when he lost his temper with the pen just after he became king and he was signing that, you know, official document and he was on camera. You know, you could say he, he just, lost, just his lost his mother. His he lost yeah. his mum. He was under a lot of strain. You know, he's somebody who, you know, is very often on his last nerve. You know, <laughs> he's not he's not somebody of a placid temperament. It was a, a small nothing thing, you could say. Well, that's not how Omid Scobie writes about it in his book. He makes an absolutely big old thing of it. And that's his choice, isn't it? So it's a it's a view. It's a hard one, isn't it? Mm. Well, he's going to be here tomorrow, so I'm sure. Uh, before we move we'll on, just very quickly, details. how do they keep the name under wraps? I know it's been out there, it's been removed, but it's in the it's mm. it's in the, I the don't ether. Think, yeah, I don't. Well, they can't clearly, and obviously uh, there is the law around libel. It applies to the UK press. Um, you know, if anybody with a big platform tweets this allegation, um, you know, legal action could be taken. But the the thing is, it's like Vanessa said earlier. Once it's out there on social media, um, in other countries, people will see it. And you know, we've seen a situation in recent years where the UK press do not really report on some of the more salacious gossip surrounding the royal family, but other outlets in other countries do. And so I've got friends who follow celeb gossip and royal gossip, and, yeah, they will sort of say all these things that I've got no idea about. And it turns out they've read it all mm, on American side. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Can we move on? Because yes. I'm quite to say the name. <laughs> <laughs> move on, move on. I can't breathe. I cannot breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Please.